Yeah, by God's grace, uh, this morning I'm here at um, Martins Avenue with the Dakars, um, worshiping with them and enjoying the fellowship. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, we're going to fellowship a little bit right after this. This, But let's just bow our heads and let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we come before you this morning. We say thank you for this service. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that we have to fellowship again. Thank you, Lord, that we can come together as one. Lord, I thank you for the warmth. I thank you, Lord, for the songs, the prayers. I thank you, Lord, because you have been with us from the very beginning. Continue to speak to us as we go through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, by the grace of God, I want to speak this uh, morning on hope. Amen. Amen. I've been um, going through some things that personally, and I've been listening to a lot of people, uh, especially with uh, the pandemic that is going on and the changes that are happening. And one of the things that I've realized is that a people without a hope is doomed. Hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Whenever you lose hope, there's one thing that I heard um, one of my uncles who is a medical doctor, is a, a very good surgeon. He always told me, he said, there's one thing that he will tell patients is that you never lose hope. Hmm. He says, when the patient loses hope, they are made, the, the chances that that patient may die is very high. And in one situation, he said, even when the person is uh, undergoing uh, anesthesia, he always encouraged the family to talk to the person. Even if the person is sick and is on the bed and um, seems to be in a, in a comatic state, he will always encourage them to always come and talk to the patient and say, no, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Everything is going on well. Why? Because they're trying to raise the hopes of that patient who is sick. Hallelujah. Amen. Because it's very, it's very imperative that that patient continues to have hope in their healing process. They say where there is hope, there is life. Mm. Right? The English mm. people will tell you that where there is hope, mm. there is life. So of all thoughts and notions, a person can have hope is one of the closest or one of the strongest that a person should have. When we have hope, we are placing our trust in the potential or something positive to happen. A person who has hope is believing God or even in the world, people who just have hope as uh, not biblical always have a feeling that they will come out of that situation. They will gravitate towards a better situation. And therefore, you're trusting and taking the right actions and making sure that a positive outcome comes your way. Hallelujah. So when you trust someone, you have hope that that person will help you. When you trust your neighbor, you have hope that when you run into a situation that is difficult, your neighbor can help you or your parents or your children. Hallelujah. Amen. Bible says in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, it says, Now these three things remain, faith, hope, and love. You see, it talks so much about love in, uh, from the, verse 1 down to verse 12. But at the end, it says there are three things that are still key. Faith, hope, and love. Praise the Lord. Hope is very important, as much as faith is important. And I want us to know that for a believer, faith is something that is key. What Paul was trying to make them understand here was that when everything gets destroyed, these three things must remain in your life. When everything gets shaken, these three things must remain in your life. Number one, faith. Number two, hope. And the third one is love. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Therefore, as children of God, we refuse to give up our faith. We refuse to give up the love that we have for God. The love that we have for people around us. Hallelujah. Amen. The love that we have for ourselves. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
and we refuse to give up hope. Hallelujah. Let's look at Psalm 41, uh, 42. There are two verses here in Psalm 42, verse uh, 5 and verse 11. It says, why are you so downcast, O my soul? He asked himself a question. The psalmist is writing this because he's speaking to himself. He finds himself in a position where he's not happy. He finds himself in a situation where he does not like what is going on around him. He does not like what is going on in him. Hallelujah. I think it's Psalm 45. It says, why are you so downcast, O my soul? One translation says, why are you disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for he will yet praise, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Hallelujah. Amen. So he makes a conscious decision when he realizes that he has lost hope in God. He makes a conscious decision to begin to ask himself, why are you in this state? Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes you have to look at the mirror and ask yourself, why are you in this situation? Sometimes you have to look at the mirror and speak to yourself and say, Daniel, why are you in this situation? Why are you downcast? Oh, my soul. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. The believer is not supposed to be downcast. The believer is not supposed to have a soul that is disturbed within him. He said, why are you so disturbed? Why are you so worried within you? In other words, there's, there's so many things going on within you that have made you to lose your grip. Hope is like a grip that you have on, 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 on and having faith that things will get better. Hope is looking on to a, a better tomorrow. Hope is different from despair. Despair is a situation where you throw in the towel. Despair is a situation in which you say it is, it is over. But hope is a situation in which things may be looking bad. There may be no money in your account. Things may not look rosy, but you believe that things will get better. Hope is a situation in which you have a mental picture of where you want to be. And you begin to walk towards that. Hallelujah. When you look at what is going on in the world today, there is one thing that the world is selling to everybody. It sells fear. It sells worry. Hallelujah. Amen. But one thing that we have come to realize is that that is not what the believer should be imbibing every day. We are supposed to be imbibing hope. We're supposed to be imbibing the favor of God, the scripture, the scripture, which is the foundation of what brings hope and joy to us. Hallelujah. When you turn on the news, just turn on news whenever there's news. Just record, make, you may want to do two columns, bad and good. What is the next news? Is it bad news or good news? You see that people sell more of bad news. And when there is nothing bad to report on the news, the news is not exciting. The news is not, is, 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 is not, is, does not have, does not motivate people. People, there's nothing to listen. But when you hear that somebody was shot, when you hear that somebody was killed, when you hear that coronavirus is, is doing more damage, that is what people want to hear. That's when the ratings go high. Hallelujah. Amen. Bible says how beautiful are the feet of those, uh, uh, how beautiful on the hills are the feet of those who bring the good news. God wants us to bring good news. Hallelujah. Amen. The gospel of Jesus Christ is a gospel of good news. It brings hope to those who have lost hope. It brings, it brings joy to those who have no joy. It brings peace to those who have no peace. Hallelujah. I want to just share a few things here quickly on, on what hope is supposed to do for us. Amen. Hallelujah. What are the reasons to have hope in this life? Listen to me. The Bible says, if in this life only we have hope, then we are of all men most miserable. Hallelujah. Because this life in itself gives you no reason to have hope. But when you have hope in Christ, you have a reason to live here below and have hope. Hallelujah. The first thing is that hope brings healing to a person's soul. Hallelujah. 
Listen, it is very important. If you stay in a state where you just think that this pandemic is going to kill you, this pandemic is destroying your life, is destroying everything, my brother, my sister, you will get depressed. When you talk with people, I, I think I, I shared a uh, story of a young man I used to work with some years back, I think two years ago. He would just come to me and say, oh, Mr. Daniel, did you hear this? I said, what? Did you hear that the stock market is going to crash? There was nothing good. I mean, he was always worried. Do you hear that uh, housing is going to be, is the housing market is about to crash? Do you hear that? He always has one bad news after the other. Therefore, you have to ask him, okay, what is good? What, what, tell us something good. Praise the Lord. Because all that bad news does not help you. It brings depression. It brings frustration. It brings pain in the heart of a man. We all face difficult times. Even with this coronavirus and the pandemic and the economy and the stock market that has been dipping more than 40% in the past uh, month and a half. Some things are inevitable. In fact, the pain and the sorrow in this world sometimes is just inevitable. But hope helps us. Hallelujah. Amen. And gives us many possibilities of possible positive things in our lives. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hope makes you look at the positive side of whatever is bad. Amen. It brings healing to a person's soul. The Bible says in Proverbs 13 verse 12, it says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. It makes a person Amen. sick. There's this uh, story that I, I, I read, um, I forgot in which book I read it in. Uh, it was talking about uh, two people who were in, in um, penitentiary. And they were very depressed because they were given a very long sentence. And one of them would look at the small hole that was in the window and look outside when the sun came and the sun was bright. And he kept looking forward to the day when he would come out of that jail. He kept looking forward. He would look at the sun, at the beauty of the sun. And he kept looking forward to the day when he would come out. And the other one sat down and looked at his life that was all messed up. Looked at his life that was totally destroyed. And after many years, he suffered a lot of sickness. And he died in jail. But the other one was released. And he went out of jail and lived happily. What are we saying here? We're saying that hope whispers that things will get done. It whispers to your soul. It whispers even uh, physically. It begins to change the way the, what they call them, hormones and uh, uh, all, the, all the chemistry in your body works. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So as a child of God, when you get to the lowest point, it is a point where you have to look up to God and put your hope in him so that he can lift you up. You need to lift up your head. Hallelujah. It brings healing even to the body. When you hope, when you have that hope in that medication that you will get healed, you will get healed. But if you take it and you're frustrated and you say all type of evil things about it, even that medication will not be able to work for you. Beloved, let us in these times of pain and sorrow and worries, let the hope that we have in God be that which will lift us up and bring healing to our mind. A lot of problems that people do have is with their mind. When you, uh, the some statistics I was looking at, that 60% of the people who are hospitalized or in hospital are there for sicknesses that are uh, invariably tied to their mindset and their mind, their thinking patterns. Hallelujah. Next thing is that hope shows us how to act. Amen. When you have hope in God, you see people who don't have hope in this life act miserably. They act anyhow. They, I mean, if, if, you, if you're looking forward to raising your children, if you're looking forward to uh, uh, having a job, having a family, the way you act in life will be different. Amen. Mm. If you're looking forward to, uh, to, to things getting better in your family, 
the way you treat your children, your parents, your relatives, and people around you will be different. The way you act. Some people drive recklessly mm. because they have no hope in life. When you look at people who have gone out and committed mass murders, it's because they have no hope in their own life. Mm. And because they want everything, the whole world to just come to an end, they want to kill everybody and kill themselves and just bring everything to a halt. But when you have hope in God, you know how to act in society. Mm. You know how to behave towards men, towards women, towards people around you, towards your parents. Romans chapter 8, verse 24, it says, for we have, it says, for we are saved by hope. Amen. Amen. Even our salvation is a product of hope because of that hope of eternal life. Now in the B part, it says, but hope that is seen is not hope. For that, for what a man seeth, he doeth not hope in. Verse 25, he said, but if we hope for that which we see not, then we do with patience wait for it. Therefore, hope controls the way a person acts. It brings that fruit of the spirit, patience. When a person is, a person is patient, patiently hoping for better things to happen. Because your bank account is empty today doesn't mean that that is the end of it. Hallelujah. Amen. When we have hope, we are more likely to choose the path that leads to something positive. When people have hope, they will do more positive things. Mm. They will not uh, uh, spiral into more negative things. When a person loses hope, they start getting drunk. When a person loses hope, even as a woman, they, 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 they begin to sell their bodies into prostitution. Mm. They have no regard for their body. They have no regard. But when a person has hope, the way the person behaves, lives their lives. They, they're looking for opportunities to come because hope makes you want to evaluate opportunities that come your way. But when you have no hope in life, even when opportunities come your way, you blow them up. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Philippians 1.20 says, according to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing shall I be ashamed. But with all boldness and always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether in life or in death. In other words, I will live a life that will glorify God. Hallelujah. Amen. I will live a life that will bring glory to the name of the Lord. That is what he's saying. In other words, I will live, I will act in society in a way that will bring glory to the name of the Lord. Hope is very important. The next thing I want to talk about hope is that it, 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 it's a motivator. You see, a lot of people lose their motivation in life because they have no hope. I'm done. Where am I going to? It's finished. I have no, no job. We are useless. And they are not motivated. I won't just paint this, uh, this scenario as I was thinking about this. You know, if you, if you go to uh, 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 maybe to a school and they say there's no scholarships, you have to pay out of pocket. Some people may find themselves kind of discouraged, having no motivation to really study. Where am I going to get money to do this? But if all of a sudden they tell you, oh, we have 10 scholarships left, and they said, everyone who has an A will get a scholarship. All of a sudden, from nowhere, there's some kind of motivation that comes in, right? Why? Because you have hope in getting that scholarship. You've not even been given the scholarship. You've just been promised that if you have an A, you will get the scholarship. If they say there's going to be some, uh, some, some grants that will be given, to anybody who brings up a proposal, a business proposal. Mm -hmm. I tell you, everyone who has lost hope in business will wake up and write a wonderful proposal. Why? Because hope motivates people. Why are you losing motivation in life? Why are you losing motivation in your schoolwork? Why are you losing motivation mm -hmm. on your job? You know, some people, they're on the job 
there's no more motivation. They're learning nothing new. Their job is becoming sloppy. Why? There's no motivation. But when there is a hope that, that there will be an increase in salary, 20% increase. Wow. I'm telling you, that person who used to come late to work will be the first to come to work. Why? Simply because hope is a source of energy. Hope is a source of energy. It helps us to see things better. It helps us to see that we can move ahead. It helps you to see that you can go one foot in front and move one other foot in front. And day by day, you see that you're moving forward. Hallelujah. Amen. Proverbs 10 verse 28. It says, the hope of, right, of the righteous is gladness, but the expectation of the wicked perishes. When you have hope, it brings joy in you. It brings motivation. You want to do some more. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have a soccer team and you're playing and you realize that you're three, three, you're being led 3-0, there's not so much motivation. I mean, you got 15 minutes to go, you're down 3-0. But if all of a sudden the opponent maybe mistakenly uh, had an own goal, you see that you are now two points down or two goals down. It motivates you to say, wow, we can do something, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's some hope there. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, never lose hope in God. Never lose hope. Mm -hmm. Never be at a point where you throw in the towel because God is always going to come around for you. Hallelujah. Amen. We are more prepared to work hard, more prepared to strive, and more willing to tackle more difficult situations when we have hope. But when you lose hope, there's no reason to even play. I remember a very beautiful team. I was thinking about that. Uh, Barcelona. They were down about 5-0 playing against... Uh, what, what team was that in your in German team? And at, at that point, against Bayern Munich. And at that point, everybody, even the best players like Messi, they started strolling on the field because hope was lost. Hallelujah. Mm. A, a good player like Suarez, they call him the, the pistol. He's, he's, I mean, somebody who could score at any time the ball runs in front of him, he lost motivation because there was no hope to win anymore. Mm. Beloved, never lose hope. Amen. Amen. Never lose your motivation. Never lose it because when you lose it, you're going to fail. Hope is what tells you, yes, I can do it. Yes, there's still some room for success. Yes, I can still make it. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Next thing I want to talk about hope is that when you have hope in God, it combats all the negative thoughts that the devil brings to you. Mm -hmm. You see, because when you lose hope, when you have despair, you are listening more to the devil. You are listening mm -hmm. more to the voice of of Satan, you're listening more to the voice of failure, and the voice of failure will be coming more and more towards you. But when you have hope that I will get out of this situation, when you have hope that I'll get out of this hole, hallelujah, you begin to think of how you can do it. You begin to see opportunities, just like the man who stayed in jail, he had no hope of coming out. But the other guy was having hopes of how he will come out of jail and how he will do, maybe uh, he'll meet his family, he'll meet his relatives, he'll get back into society. But the other guy lost it. Beloved, our mind is very important. It's very important. It is difficult to, uh, uh, to have those negative thoughts when you are hopeful. And it is difficult to mix the negative thoughts and the positive thoughts when you have despair. Mm -hmm. So as a child of God, your mind must be fixed. That is why the psalmist said, my heart is fixed, O Lord. Mm -hmm. My heart is fixed, trusting you. My heart is fixed. In other words, despite the things that are around me, I refuse to give up hope. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I refuse to give up. I refuse. I refuse. In other words, to combat it. To combat means to fight. In other words, there is the, 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 the positive thoughts and the negative thoughts. But when you have hope, you win that battle of negative thoughts coming on your mind every day. Hallelujah. Amen. 
God encouraged Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. He says, for I know the plans that I have for you. Hallelujah. I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. There are plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. One translation says, to give you a future and an expected end. Hallelujah. In other words, I know the plans that I have for you. God is saying, look, the present situation is not all of it when it comes to your life. I have plans for you. Hallelujah. Amen. When you think I can't do this, hope reminds you that you are capable of doing it. When the world tells you you cannot do this, the hope that you have in God tells you, no, you can do this. When you think it is a disaster, the hope that you have in God reminds you that you can improve in that situation. You're a C student and you have that hope in God and you believe that you can do better. You will work harder. You have the motivation to work towards a B and towards uh, an A. I was talking to some young uh, high schoolers yesterday. I always like to ask about their grades, especially in math, in uh, reading, American history, English. Amen? So I asked one of them, I said, um, how are your grades? He saw the question coming. He was like, uh, I said, just tell me, what grade do you have in math? He said, no, it can be better. That, when a person starts by saying, I, I know I can do better than that grade. In other words, he has hope. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He said he's very convinced that by the end of this school year, that B will turn, uh, that, 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 that C will turn into at least a B. I said, that is good. At least there is a way forward. At least there is a motivation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. While hope cannot eradicate all the negative thoughts immediately, the more you nurture the feeling of hope, the less the thoughts will pop out in your head. The mm. more you nurture that feeling of hope in God and make yourself joyful, hoping, looking forward to the, 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 the better side, the less you will hear the voice of depression, the less you hear the voice of things that are not right. Hallelujah. The problem is that we entertain. We entertain so much bad news. We entertain so much the voice of of, of, of the devil. The problem that Eve had was that she spent too much time listening to what this, uh, the, the devil had to say. All she needed to say, this is what the Lord has said. It is written. Hallelujah. You know, when, when, when Jesus had this, this discourse with the devil, when he came out of the wilderness and was tempted, Jesus said, it is written. The devil started asking questions. It is written. It is written. At a certain point, he said, Get thee behind me. Just stop talking. Just stop entertaining. Just stop talking. That is why sometimes I just shut my mouth up. I don't want to talk with certain people because there's such a negative influence. All what they bring to you is despair. Mm. Just so much despair. They weigh you down. They pull you down. But talk to people who have hope. Talk with people who are struggling, but who are seeing better days ahead. Hallelujah. Such people are encouragement. Praise the Lord. Hope brings, next point here I want to say is that it brings an inner peace. Amen. Amen. As negative thoughts can help ease negative feelings too. Amen. Now it is important for us to know that there is a peace that a man should always have with him. When a person is not at peace with himself, it is noticeable. Mm. It is seen outside. When you are worried, when you have no peace within, it can be seen. You can mask it. You can put all the makeup. You can paint your face. You can, you can wear, you know, glasses. You can make your hair and cover your whole face and wrap yourself in the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, forgotten this thing they call, uh, the Muslims tie their head with hijab or whatever. But it does not change that which is inside. Yes. Amen? Amen? You have to be more concerned with that which is inside. Your inner peace, your inner joy. 
The Bible says men look at the outer side. Men look at the surface. But God looks at the heart. God looks deep inside. When you're not in, at peace with yourself, it's, it's trouble. Mm. It, is, it, is, it is bad. Mm. Don't carry a veil outside. A veil of joy. That's one thing, one reason why I don't like Facebook. Because everybody on Facebook is happy. Everybody on Facebook is successful. Their children are the best. Their husband is the best. Their wife is the most beautiful. Painted and packed and managed and, and packaged. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Inner peace. Mm -hmm. Hope is the opposite of despair. Of despondency. Mm -hmm. Discouragement. Hopelessness. That is the opposite. But God wants us to flow in the other direction. Hallelujah. Amen. Because despair creates a breeding ground for, 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 for self-hate. Mm. For inaction. For oh, depression. Jesus. Hope allows joy, enthusiasm, and quietment and contentment. Hallelujah. Yes. You may be driving a car that is smoking like a chimney. But you have hope that there is no way you're going to end. Amen. Amen. You may be patch, uh, just, just perching somewhere for some days. Or you may be perching there for one year, two years. And not having a way to turn. But listen to me. That is not the end of it. Hallelujah. Amen. Love what one of my friends will always say. He said, because you spend the night in the garage does not make you a car. Because yes. you sleep in the garage does not convert you into a car. You are not a car. You are a human being. You are a person created by God Almighty. And God knows the plans and the thoughts that he has for you. Hallelujah. Amen. To give you a future. To give you a hope. To give you an expected end. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 15 verse 13. He says, may the hope of God fill you with mm. all joy and peace and in believing that by the power of the Holy Ghost, you may abound in hope. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, may the, may the God of hope, God is the God of hope. Hallelujah. He wants you to be filled with so much joy. He wants you to be filled with so much hope because he's the one who produces that hope. Hallelujah. Go to God and say, Lord, give me hope. Lord, give me hope in this situation in which I am in. Give me, let me, let, let, let me have that hope that will propulse me from where I am to know that I can get out of this situation. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Romans 5 verse 1. It says, through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in hope. Of the glory of our God. Hallelujah. Amen. We rejoice because of that hope. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Beloved, you need to have that hope. The Bible says Christ in us is the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Next thing I want to share here. Maybe one or two more. And then we'll pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Is that when a person has hope, he can now contaminate others. And just like a person who has despair will contaminate others. Are you getting what I'm saying? A, hope is like an energy that you can pass on or you can suck out of people. Mm. Imagine you come to a place and everybody is happy, everybody is joyful and believing God for great things, believing God that this year will be a great year. And you come there, you're so moody and they ask you what is going on. You're just telling them about, oh man, the housing market is going to crash. Coronavirus statistics show that there's a new variant that is going to invade America in the next six months. And 20% more people will die. Now, you're going to begin to dampen people's spirits. Right? Even those who believed in God and who had their faith in God and their hope in God will get worried because... You have brought in negative energy into the environment. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But when you come to a people who are down, and that is what the gospel that Jesus Christ brought to us is all about. When you come to a people who are down, and you tell them that 
by his stripes you are healed. You can be healed. And you give them testimonies of people who have been healed. All of a sudden, there's some hope in that person that I too can be healed. Hallelujah. Amen. You begin to share testimony of people who you know have gone through similar financial difficulties and have turned the corner. It brings hope into somebody. Why not contaminate people with hope? Why not go around contaminating people with hope about a God who can do it? Hallelujah. Hope spreads quickly. When the possibility of a better future is put forward, people are ready to listen. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Despite the fact that people are so prone to all the bad news and everything, if we all of a sudden come here and we begin to say, oh, finally, coronavirus has been eradicated because there is a simple technique you can use to stop it in the whole world. Now, everybody will have hope. Everybody wants to listen. Even if it's not true, because you have given people hope. You have created a hope of what they are looking towards. Hallelujah. Amen. When Jesus died, the disciples had lost all hope. They did not know what to do. And Peter began to spread despair. Peter said, I go a fishing. And what did the what's the next thing that I said? <laughs> we go a fishing. They were really, it's just I, I'm I'm discouraged with whole this whole thing. I'm going to fish. I'm, I'm backsliding. I've lost hope in all this thing. This gospel thing means nothing. And the others just said, they did not even think. They just said, we go with you. But now you see a repentant Peter who has repented and now has come to the knowledge of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He goes out to preach the gospel. What happens to the others? They follow and they go and they begin to preach the gospel. Amen. Praise the Lord. Beloved, be somebody who has that kind of contagious hope that you can, uh, you, you can uh, infect the people around you with hope. Hallelujah. Amen. The last thing I want to say here before we pray is that hope is the hallmark of a true believer. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is a mark of a Christian. Hope. Hallelujah. Let us read Galatians, uh, first. Uh, no, let me just take one verse. Colossians chapter 1 from verse 24. Yeah, so many verses. So I'll just read just one. It says, Now I rejoice in what was, so, was offered for you. Just uh, bring it to the screen. Colossians 1 24. Please. I'm going to read from 24 to 20, 29. All right, do we have it? Colossians chapter 1 from verse 24. Oh, our technical team is still looking for it. All right, good. It says, I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Let's go to the next verse. Yeah, we're going to be reading right up to 29. Okay, let me, let me just read from you. All right, good. Okay, let, let me just read from here because it looks like you're having trouble scrolling. It says, I have become its servant by the commission God gave to me to present to you the word of God in its fullness. Verse 26, it says, the mystery that, that has been yet kept and hidden for the ages and generations, but it's now disclosed unto the saints. To them, God has chosen to make known to the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is this. Christ in you is the hope of glory. 
He's saying that this thing we call the gospel is what is a mystery that has been hidden from the unbelievers. Because a person who has not really understood it cannot have Christ. That is why sometimes I wonder whether everybody who is who is coming to church is going to church, is singing in the choir, is playing instrument, is, is having a Christian name, is really understanding what it means to be a Christian. It says a mystery. What we are living as Christians, what when we become Christians, is a mystery, a hope that we have in us against everything, against hope. The Bible even talks about uh, a man called uh, uh, Abraham. The Bible says, against all hope, he believed God. In other words, when people around him, even those who believed that he could have a child, maybe when he was 30 years old, they said, oh no, let's, let's, let's go and do a, 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 a test. Let's go and see a urologist. And the urologist gave them some medication. He took the medication till he was 40. And at 40, the urologist still believed that things would work. And then at 50, the urologist said, no, I don't think this thing is going to work, bro. <laughs> Just forget about it. If you can adopt a child, adopt a child. Uh, at least you have a lot of cattle. You have dogs. Some of them, you can name them John, Peter, Mary. And just consider them to be your children. And now, listen to me. At a certain point, people who have hope with you go, they walk along with you. But when they get to a certain point, people lose faith. People lose hope. And that is why only those who truly have the hope of glory, Christ in us, the hope of glory, who understand these things. That is why it is such people who every day look for healing when it comes to God. Because their hope is in God, their healer. It is only such who will have God whispering to them every day. Hallelujah. It is such who have that hope in God who will decide to have their lives patterned and walk and act in a particular way. Because they have hope in God. Hallelujah. What are you saying this morning? I'm saying that as a child of God, you, and you have hope, Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is what brings the motivation in you to wake up against the things that are filling your mind, against the things you hear on the news. Mm. What are you saying, pastor? I'm saying that when your thoughts are being, are being bombarded, your mind is being bombarded from left, right, center. Kick the woman out of the house. Just, just kick your husband out of the house. After all, this is America. Who cares? Listen to me. Come to a point where you have reason. Why? Because Christ in you is the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Amen. When you come to a point where you say, who cares? How this old Bible, after all, it's been many, many years ago. They wrote this thing. Who even knows whether it is true? Who has gone to heaven and come back? You know, there are many Bible uh, uh, church going people who have no faith in the Bible don't even believe the Bible, don't believe the words of the Bible anymore. Hallelujah. Amen. But you come to a point where you say, Lord, no matter how terrible the thoughts that the world is bringing my way, I refuse, I will overcome them. Hallelujah. You gain inner peace. Why? Because Christ is in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. And then you become contagious. Wherever you go, you begin to contaminate people. You begin to give them hope. You begin to give them joy. When you come, there's laughter. You give them hope, to, 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 to a, a reason to live. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Recently, I was looking at the, 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 the video of the CEO, uh, what it called, the, the geo of the redeemed church, who lost his son at age 42. Now, does that go contrary to all what he has preached as a pastor? Or the son who was 42 years old, who died, who had just preached on the midweek service and was motivating a lot of youths? Does it go contrary to what we believe? Does it mean that God is dead? Does it mean that, that our God is not alive anymore? I love the song we used to sing in Sunday school, God's not dead, he's alive. I feel him all over me. Listen to me. It's not a song for Sunday school. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes. 
God's not dead. Society may want to tell you that God is dead. The Bible is old. It's mm -hmm. old school. No. There's, new, there's a new religion out there. A, mm -hmm. a, a religion about let's just feel good. Let's make ourselves happy mm -hmm. after all this. No. God's not dead. He's alive. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And I feel him all over me. Hallelujah. Amen. That is what makes you kick as a Christian. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. That's what makes you kick. Bible says in verse 28 there, Colossians 1, 28, it says, we proclaim him, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. Hallelujah. In verse 29, it says, to this end, I labor, struggling with all energy. My God, I love this. He said, to this end, because of this hope, in glory, it does not come easy, beloved. He says sometimes it's not because I just wake up in the morning and I feel like somebody has given me a shot of adrenaline or has pumped a lot of sugar in my body and I start kicking like an agile battery. No. He said, to this end, I labor, struggling with all energy. Hallelujah which so powerfully works in me. Very strong words. Labor, struggling, all energy, powerfully. Do you wake up every day looking at Christ in me, the hope of glory? Do you wake up every morning and say, Lord, I thank you for the hope that I have in Christ. I will make it this day. I refuse to throw in the towel in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When you turn around and you see somebody driving a Tesla and you look at your own car, it doesn't look, it doesn't really look like a car. It just has the name of a car or the similitude yeah. of a car. Hallelujah. What do you say to yourself? And some people don't even have a key. Some people don't even have a, a bunch of keys to shake. You know, some people will just have a, a bunch of keys to just shake around so that, you know, it's, it's very common in Africa. When they say, well, he said, no, my car is in the garage. They just shake it. Some people don't even have a bunch of keys to shake. But listen to me. I got my faith in God to shake wherever I go. Yes, Hallelujah. I got my faith in God to shake, to say, Christ is in me. The hope of glory. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I love the, 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 the old song that says, our, our God, it says, oh God, our help in ages past, our hope in years to come. In other words, in the years to come, you will still remain our hope. Whether it is 10 years, whether it is 20 years, we are not quitting. We are not going away. We refuse to give up. Yes. We say, Lord, you will remain our shelter yes, in the stormy blast and our eternal home. Under the shadow of his throne. Thy saints have dwelt secure. Sufficient is thine arm alone. And our defense is sure. Hallelujah. Amen. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. Amen. Let Christ be your solid rock. Let Christ be your hope. Hallelujah. And let Amen. you be the one who will sing every morning. My hope is built on nothing else. Yes, nothing, nothing but Christ. Hallelujah. Because Christ in me is a hope of glory. Hallelujah. Just bow down your heads and just bow down your heads. I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning. Hallelujah. Maybe it's for somebody in the service. Maybe it's for somebody who is going to listen to this message on YouTube or somewhere. I want you to know that you need hope. Amen. Hallelujah. This message, my hope is built on Christ. Let your hope be built in Christ. Amen. Amen. Let him be the foundation. Have that hope. Don't give up. Don't think that you've come to, 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 to life's end. No, it ends over until it's over. Hallelujah. God is still in the business of changing things. God is still in the business of doing new things. He says, remember not the former things. Hallelujah. He's a God who does new things. He's a God who changes. He can change everything, but he is unchangeable. Hallelujah. 
He can bless everyone, can convert everyone to a billionaire, and he will not become poor at all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But I give you praise. I give you glory and honor. I thank you for your church. I thank you for the believers gathered here. Lord, I pray that you will give us that hope, Amen. that our hope will be continually built on Christ. Amen. That, Lord, when we wake up in the morning, Lord, we'll not be full of despair and discouragement. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will help us, oh God, that we will go out, oh God, with our heads lifted high, knowing that we are the king's children. Hallelujah. We are princesses and princes of the most high God. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, where there is despair, that you, you remove that despair. Where there's frustration or there's a failure, Lord, remove that, that, that spirit of failure and show that brother, that sister, that husband, that wife, that, Lord, you are able to do it, that you are able to change their situation. But I thank you. I give you praise because you are doing something new in our lives. Blessed be your holy name. We give you the praise. We give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Lord bless you. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love.